Okay, we have University of Wisconsin head coach Greg Gard, players Ethan Happ, Nigel Hayes. We'll start with an opening statement from coach. We'll do questions to students, student athletes, then questions to coach. So, uh, Coach Gard. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'm obviously disappointed with how it, it finished up uh, from a standpoint of having 17 turnovers, a program that prides themselves in taking care of the ball. Uh, to have it play out as it did. And obviously, you got to give credit to Mike's team in Notre Dame of, of putting us in that position. And, and they also made plays down the stretch. Um, but at the same time, we weren't able to capitalize on possessions. Um, I think turning over three of the last four. And you know, at both halves, I thought we, we were too loose with the ball at, at key times. Um, but also, at the same time, as I finished up with the team here just a moment ago in the locker room, uh, extremely proud of what they've done this year, what they've accomplished, from where they were. You know, December 15th, January 15th, uh, you probably would not have predicted that we us be in this tournament, let alone have a chance to be in this position. Um, but obviously, this will, this is going to sting for a long time because I don't know if there's a program in the country that prides itself more on taking care of the ball and valuing every possession more than Wisconsin. I don't know if there's anybody that works on it more than, than we do. And to have, you know, this kind of ending, uh, hopefully it'll be, it'll sting for a, a while, but hopefully it'll be, great motivation as we continue to grow and, and move through the offseason. We have two microphones. Questions for Ethan or Nigel right here in the back. Michael. Uh, for Nigel, uh, Michael Luongo, AP Broadcast. Just your emotion, you're up, and all of a sudden, 19 seconds to go, it, it kind of swings. Just uh, just talk about that emotional swing from being up three to all of a sudden um, having the season come to an end. Uh, that's kind of the, the nature of this whole tournament. You've seen it a lot. Uh, they've they've made a you know a big deal about it showing the uh, the roller coaster of emotions that you can have. You know we go from uh, Vito hitting the three to you know thinking uh, we have a chance to have the game and you know you blink your eyes and next thing you know Jackson shooting two free throws and now we're down five and now we're going home. But that's that's what you expect when you um, that's the price you pay when you play competitive sports. My high school coach always told me that uh, the farther you go, the more important the game, the bigger risk you run. And uh, you know, if you don't come out a winner, it's it's all it gets harder and harder and tougher and tougher to deal with. But you know, I'm proud of proud of my guys. Like Coach Guard said, um, we're in a position this year where everyone told us we wouldn't even make the tournament, let alone you know being a Sweet 16. So um, not to say that you know I'm satisfied. I, I really do believe we uh, you know should have won this game. We were the we were the better team. We didn't. Play well enough, had too many turnovers, but all in all, I'm proud of the team. Down here in the third row, go ahead. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, this question is for uh, for uh, Nigel Hayes and Ethan Happ and everything. When you, I guess, once the sting of this kind of gets away from you, um, do you can you kind of look look to next year in the sense that you got a good foundation given all that you guys went through this uh, this past year? Start with Nigel. Yeah, definitely. I mean, for us to again, we didn't have um, many seniors. We had one, Jordan Smith. And we have a, uh, a lot of guys who were older but didn't necessarily have the experience now that they have that. And um, fortunately, we had a lot of younger guys. And Coach Guard got them um, out there, got them some playing time, got them some experience. So that would be something that we could definitely use uh, for next year, the situation that they've been in, the, the, the amount of minutes that they've played, the amount of film that we've watched. So everyone should have uh, you know, a better grasp on things, not only uh, mentally be physically stronger, be better, smarter basketball players. And Ethan? Uh, we're in good hands with Coach Guard coming back next year, but other than that, um, you don't look too much ahead. All right, stay in the third row here at the end of the uh, end of the row. Ask questions for Nigel. Um, you did hit a couple of shots there near the in the second half that were that were pretty big. But were you not still not quite where you wanted to be offensively tonight, especially in the first half? No, I, I didn't think I did a uh, good enough job finishing around the rim. I uh, you know I passed up some shots. Uh, you know I found some teammates that were open. Oh, we definitely love to go in, but I didn't. Do a good enough job of when I got to the rim, uh, making sure I finished. Any more questions for Ethan or Nigel? Okay, fellas, you're excused. We'll take questions for Coach Guard. Do we have any questions for Coach Guard? Okay, right here. Yep, Howard. Howard Eskin, Fox 29, Philadelphia, and WIP. Coach, on the on the play at the baseline. Was there a play that you were trying to run that really wouldn't invite the trap to try to get away from the baseline? Well, no. We wanted to get the ball to Nigel, which is what we did. We ran the baseline. He came back to it. Um, you know, 
once once that happens, then you got to make good decisions coming out of that situation if you do get trapped. But I, I like with him being older, bigger, stronger, he can go through traps, he can go over the top of traps, but I wanted the ball in his hands. Um, you don't have to look at the tape to exa see exactly what happened. I know he tried to split it, uh, and the ball got knocked away, and obviously ended up with a layup for them. But uh, you know, I thought once we got the, my ma main concern was getting the ball in bounds, and uh, once we did that, then we have to make good decisions and spread the floor and, and take care of the ball. And credit Notre Dame for putting a good trap. You know, we we won a game against Michigan State early in the year when we set a trap and got a turnover, and um, you you hope you're never on the other side of the coin and that you can uh, make sure you take care of the ball in those key situations. Uh, tonight, we didn't. We, we turned it over, like I said, this, um, you know, there. And then, then Bronson gets has his turnovers. We're coming down the floor when we're down three. So situations that you don't want, never want to be in, but understand that it's going to happen. Um, you know, it's, you've got to do a better job of, of trying to split that trap or get rid of it before the trap comes. But uh, in terms of what we had talked about in the timeout, um, they did what we wanted to do and got it where we needed to get it. It was just a matter of getting to the, what was next. Stay in the aisle. Go ahead, Michael, behind him. Coach, uh, just how much time do you think you'll allow yourself to reflect on just the kind of year you've been through with all the emotional swings that you've gone through as a team, personally, and everything else, to reflect on just how special this year was for you with everything that you've been going through? Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll take a while because this is going to sting for a while. But I'm sure... As time goes on, you'll learn to, to reflect. Uh, it's been, obviously, as you all know, it's been a very surreal, you know, uh, excruciating year in some, some regards, exhilarating in others. Uh, but I'll definitely look back at this group, obviously being my first team to coach, and even looking back before mid-December of how they've, they've helped me go through the whole situation I went through with my dad. and. Um, they helped, they bonded around me and, and helped me get through that. Um, and they're still helping me cope with it. Uh, and it's also my job now as the steward of this program to help them navigate through this, learn from this, and uh, help our one senior move on, Jordan Smith, and then help our other guys take this and, and uh, turn the page eventually. We, we won't turn the page yet because this will take a little, little while for us to digest, but uh, be able to move on to what's next and prepare for the future. Back here in row three. Yeah. Chris Murray, Philadelphia Sunday Sun again. Um, can, you, can, you, can you basically say that, you know, I have a better team now, you know, having gone through all this, I know it's to know getting through 17 turnovers, getting through the loss of this is difficult, but can you say you have a better team now than you had back on December 15th? Well, absolutely, because we wouldn't, we wouldn't have been here if you would have took a poll December 15th. You know, we weren't we weren't far enough along the process. We weren't mature enough. We had a lot of shoes to fill from last year, a lot of growing to do, and, and they've done that. Um, and I, I thought we've you know, the 17 turnovers are, you know, we we deal with that. But I thought we never quite got to where we needed to get taking care of the ball all year. Uh, and this part of it's our youth, part of it's things we still got to mature through and, and grow. Um, part of it's decision making that we need to become even smarter basketball players, but 17, it's it's too high for tonight, but I thought our average over the year was too high. Uh, we need to, that's an area in the off season we really need to to hone in on, and hopefully with experience, albeit sometimes ne or rough experiences like tonight in a season ending situation like this, that um, we we learn from that and, and use it to, to fuel what's down the road. We'll take one more question if there is one for Coach Guard. If not, all right, Coach, you're excused. Thank, right, you. thank you. We'll have Notre Dame in just a second.